Action. Taking photographs of things that move or action. What are the best settings for your camera? Well, the first thing is let's sort of define what action you're talking about. So the action that is most difficult for a camera is where your subject is moving towards that. Let's try it on this camera towards and then it moves further away. The autofocus system on the lens needs to track and keep up with your moving subject. If you're photographing action that's moving up or down, let's say gymnastics, where someone is in the same plane, then your camera doesn't need to focus uh, depth wise. It just needs to, you could actually shoot in single focus and you're not tracking motion that way. For example, here I had my son just jump straight up, okay? <laughs> and he is in the same plane. I'm shooting at 1.2 on the Fujifilm X-T2. Uh, but the camera did not need to track him. All I needed to do was use a single focus point. I focused to the spot he's standing at and his action began. And as long as the person stays in that focal plane, then you really could use single focus point. If your subject is moving towards and further away from the camera, then you need to switch your camera to the continuous focus mode using the little C on the front of your camera. Just switch it to C. C, C, senor. And then what you need to do is use a, a type of zone focus. Okay, so to do that, just switch from the single point focus mode, go to a zone mode. And now if you're in a zone mode, you can actually choose the size of that zone. And I believe for my son, I use a very large zone like this. And the reason is because the background is very simple and he is coming at me. There is no other distractions where the camera can get confused. However, if you're trying to pinpoint action, your subject is, uh, maybe there's other people, then I recommend making your zone slightly smaller. However, sometimes you need to pinpoint action and the zone is still too big. The camera may get confused and grab other people. In that case, what you wanna do is get out of zone and go back to single focus point. So you want to get out of this guy and you want to go to single point. And now you can use single point and continuous. It's just not as good as zone. Zone is very good at like, you know, being a little hyper and staying with action. Uh, sometimes continue the little single focus point in the middle can get confused, especially with the older Fujifilm cameras. Now you can make this focus point very tiny and very small. Just know the smaller it gets, the tougher it is for the camera to maintain focus uh, based on contrast and grabbing on. That's why zone works so much better. Now one other thing I'll, note, I'll um, mention here is if you notice when I first started the test with my son, he's actually blurry in the photographs here. And what I realized, like a dummy, what I realized was, here's my settings. I'm shooting at um, ISO 800, 1.8 on the 56 millimeter 1.2, one of the slow, I always love using the slower <laughs> focusing lenses. And it's at 300th of a second. You need to understand that if you're trying to freeze action, you really need to get your shutter speeds up there. Now it depends on your sport or action, but really people can move over 1 500th, 1 1,000th, 1 2,000th, okay? If you really want sharp, sharp. So I was at 1 300th and then I went to 1 1,000th. And if you notice from all these photographs, this is using a zone, he's booking it. I mean, my son is pretty fast. He's going super fast here and the camera, every shot is in focus, okay? One thing to keep in mind is every lens has a minimum focus distance as well. So if you're getting pictures that aren't in focus at a certain, like maybe you're shooting a basketball game and you're right on the sidelines and you can't get focus, well then the players may be too close to your lens. Every lens has a minimum focus distance. So you may need a different lens for the action that you're trying to shoot if the people are all up in your face. So think about that too. As soon as my son would get too close, he was out of focus. But as you can see here, I'm shooting at one two thousandth of a second on the X-T2. Look at that, he's floating in the air. How cool is that? And you can see that this is an older camera with a really good focus system. And uh, the newer cameras, X-T3 and X-T30, they have even better autofocus systems. But um, I found that the Fujifilm cameras are great at autofocus with action, as long as they grab that first frame in focus. Meaning, 
you got to make sure your camera is ready to go. So if it's a race or a sprint, make sure you pre-focus on your subject and don't wait till they take off because the camera sometimes is like, what do, what do we do? Oh, action. Okay, and those of you shooting indoor action, like I mentioned basketball or indoor sumo wrestling, there's not much action in that. You're gonna have to live with high ISOs because if you want one thousandth of a second, two thousandth of a second, and you know that's something you're gonna have to live with. So here's a little bit of a zoom on the JPEG. You lose quality at four thousandth of a second. It's not as sharp as if you were shooting outdoor sports. So you may, de you may be a little disappointed if you're shooting at high ISOs in an indoor gym with bad lighting. If you come back and your images are sharp focus-wise, they may be a little muddy noise-wise, okay? So just keep that in mind. All right, so there was a lot to take in there, so I'll summarize <laughs> really quick. If you have action that's moving in the same plane, you don't really need a continuous focus point. You could just pre-focus on the gymnastics rings and the person will be in focus. Just use single focus point and a single little box. Two, if the person is moving forward and backward or if it's a sport that you gotta go this way, then you're gonna need number one, switch it to continuous focus. And number two, a zone of a certain size is better than a single point. You may need to move to single point though if you gotta shoot between people. Uh, just know you may suffer a little bit because um, the zone's a little better. There are also more sophisticated menu options if you wanna control your focus, like this one, which tracks a bit basketball player if they go behind other basketball players. That's a little beyond this video though. Oh, I forgot to mention, if you have like a skier or a swimmer or someone where the entire scene is white and they're just in the frame by themselves, you could use a wide. Instead of using a box zone, you could actually use the entire sensor and the camera is smart enough to pick up any kind of contrast in that scene. Next, think about high ISOs indoors. You may lose quality and also shutter speed. Your shutter speed is important if you want to freeze action. Make sure you keep your shutter speeds higher. Um, that has nothing to do with focus. That has to do with how fast the shutter freezes action. And you will get some awesome action of photos. All right, I'll see you guys next time.